Hi guys. Hi Valerie. Hi. <laughs> so I'm really excited to have Valerie back. I interviewed Valerie. It felt like Christmassy, like probably closer to November. Um, we just discussed extensively about your catering and what you do, how you do it. And we did also touch on the fact that you were going to have a cookbook. Yeah. Congratulations. The cookbook is just about to launch or has launched, depending on the time you end up seeing this. There you go. So pre-orders are right now, May 12th. You can get your hands on it. With that said, I want to talk everything cookbook. Mm -hmm. But for a moment, can you catch up everyone who hasn't seen you, catch them up to speed about why did this cookbook even come to light? So based on my company called My Digital Kitchen, I specialize in recipe development. I mostly uh, cater to um, healthy foodies and people who are just looking to eat better and have an overall better well-being. And I also run a dessert catering business that caters to all dietary types, so gluten-free, paleo, vegan, and the whole theme of that is mostly sugar conscious. So either eliminating the unnecessary processed sugars or reducing it and replacing it with healthier low glycemic sugars. So uh, um, basically leading up to the cookbook, I was doing more things for my business. I was expanding my menu back in 2018 until an unprecedented uh, turn of events happened and I got into a motorcycle accident. So that basically put me in the hospital for over three months and wow. I made it home 10 days before Christmas. So I kind of saw that as a blessing. While wow. I was in rehab, I, I, I actually spent my birthday that year in rehab and I was going through my email and I actually got an email from a publishing company saying that they loved my Instagram page and they wanted to explore doing a cookbook with me. And at first I thought it was spam because I'm going, oh wait, like this can't be real. Like what's going on here? And here we are almost two years later, I have a book, a cookbook launching on May 12th. So that's basically how the journey started. The good thing that I, or the one thing that I did like about the publishing house was I had the creative freedom to decide the theme of the cookbook. And I was given like some time to figure that out. So by the time I got home, I realized that my mobility is severely limited. I'm, at the time I was still walking uh, with crutches and occasionally the wheelchair, but I had to go to hospital appointments. And I, I came from being a, super healthy foodie, super active at the gym, to now just, I can't even go for a walk outside. I, it's, I, can't, I can barely walk around my apartment. And being in the hospital and eating the hospital diet, I realized mm. that I needed a detox. And I had also lost a lot of muscle mass because I was bedridden for so long. And I needed to at least start the process of not necessarily getting my body back, but getting my body into a healthier state. So detoxing, yeah. not just from the bad food, but also from the medication that I was on as well. So I realized that, hmm, okay, I need to formulate a diet where I'm able to still eat the food that I love, but I'm still able to either lose weight or even maintain my current weight or just feel better overall because I physically am not able to burn the calories. And that's when the low carb uh, idea came to mind. And that's basically how I formulated my low carb cookbook. I also called it 30 minute dinners because my mobility was restricted. I didn't have mm. as much energy to stand on the counter and cook longer. So I needed something quick. I needed something easy and I needed something that would actually assist with my weight loss and also just, you know, overall detoxing my body. And what I did find with low carb diets is I'm not against carbs at all. I love carbs. The problem is when you're actually not active, it's a lot harder to burn the calories when you eat more carbs. And plus when you're resting and you're in recovery, pain requires energy and energy also 
eats food. So you find yourself feeding on all kinds of things. Your, your cravings for carbs grow, your cravings for sugar grows. And unfortunately, depending on your preference, you might also see an increase in your weight or your BMI. Yeah. So at least with the low carb diet, what I found was when you're actually feeding off of fat instead of carbs, it burns a lot slower. And that way you can actually burn more calories in your rest state because your body is relying on burning, using the fat stored in your body for energy rather than carbs. So mm -hmm. you're also able to stay fuller for a lot longer. So it took me a while to curate the kind of recipes that I wanted for the book. I did like, I tested the recipes like two, three times. And I also ate my way through the book as well. And I basically say I, I ate my way back to health. I'm still eating my way back to health because, you know, I, I find that there is really nothing curated for people with disabilities. And unfortunately, that is my story now. So I have to learn how to live in my new body and in my new state and still do the things that I like to do, cook the foods that I like to eat without feeling like I'm not able to exercise like I used to or be down because, you know, my body doesn't look quite right. So that was basically how my cookbook was born. It's called 30 Minute Low Carb Dinners. Um, the meals are easy, they're quick, they're delicious. It caters to all dietary preferences. We go from meat to poultry to seafood. And I also have vegetarian low carb options because it's quite difficult to follow a low carb diet while being vegetarian. So it took me longer to actually formulate that chapter, but it was successful nonetheless. And of course, I have a final chapter called adaptogenic beverages, which are basically herbal remedies that you can drink at nighttime that can assist with good sleep as well as reducing stress. Because sometimes on a low carb diet, because you're not relying on high carbs like you would normally do so, it actually can make you a bit fatigued, it can impact your energy. So this actually helps with um, stress, brain function, and also sleeping well at night, because a good night's sleep is also good for not even just the low carb, for any diet you're on and just for your overall well-being. So here we are, it launches very soon, and I'm so excited, I can't wait to share the book with everyone. I'm so excited for you. Can you touch upon the beverage aspect just a little bit more? So what are we talking about? I know you said herbal. So are they mostly teas? So they're mostly herbal teas and beverages. Um, so adaptogens are herbs that are used for stress management. So you have your herbs like ashwagandha, you have your turmeric, you have your reishi mushrooms, and these are specialized herbs. So they're not too hard to find. You can easily order them on Amazon, and they're specially formulated to help with stress in our everyday lives. So, and they also help with, you know, sleeping at night because, again, I'll, I'll, part of the problem I also had was because of my injuries, because of my pain and the medication, I had a hard time sleeping. For a while, even after I got discharged from the hospital, I had to go on sleeping pills. And then when the pills stopped working, I went on antidepressants because I was not only depressed from the trauma, but also from lack of sleep. But I knew that this has to be a short-term thing. I can't continue this forever. I need to get my sleeping pattern back. And these natural methods with the adaptogen beverages adaptogenic beverages actually helped me get my sleeping pattern back. It did take a while. It does take a while, but the consistency is the key in this. Yeah. So can we talk about the vegetarian section a little bit? Mm -hmm. In your opinion, I understand that the vegetarian section is a little bit harder to do due to the yeah. fact that it's still a low carb cookbook. Yes. What would you say is the most underrated ingredient in the vegetarian section? Tofu. The, the, I, sorry, tofu. Yes, tofu. And I have a lot of friends who love eating, especially eating my food, as they tell me. And um, they have all had negative experiences with tofu from what they've told me. And even when I told them, like when I had a few of them come over and test the recipes and I said, oh, I have this tofu chapter and I have these tofu recipes, they were hesitant because yeah. they assume that tofu, first the texture isn't quite to their liking, they think it's flavorless. And 
I say it really depends on how you cook it. Yeah. And so tofu is very underrated because some people might think that you either just have to enjoy tofu in its raw state or with very little season, which isn't the case. Look, I have about two, three tofu recipes with the vegetarian section. They're very high in protein and they fill you up quite well, especially when you combine them with vegetables. So uh, once cooked right, tofu can be quite amazing. I've got like crispy tofu with black pepper. Mm. I've also got some curry tofu in there. It's perfect. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So can we transition to sure. the meat section? Okay. Um, not necessarily meat. It could be meat, seafood, or poultry, because I understand yeah. those are all chapters. Mm -hmm. What would you say is that dish in your menu that you enjoy cooking the most? Ooh, man, I enjoy cooking all of them, but yeah. I would say I enjoy cooking my, um, ooh, it's, it's actually a very hard question because all the recipes of the book, in my opinion, are quite great, but I will say this, I did make, um, some Thai meatballs from my mom, which is in my book. And um, it's, 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 a, it's a turkey based meatball. And the, the cool thing about that was you can eat it on its own. You can, you can even pair it with like cauliflower rice. You can pair it with a salad. You can even eat it with um, a lettuce bun. So it's so yeah. versatile. And that's one of the things I really enjoyed about that recipe. And plus it only took 30 minutes. To, to prepare so you can have this luxurious dish and it takes such a short time you can eat it with many options and of course it tastes great so i would say that that was probably like one of my favorite but you know they're all your favorites. they're all they're all good they're all good yeah. i understand within your cookbook there's about 75 recipes is that correct yes that is correct perfect that's like more recipes than I anticipated. So thank you. You're welcome. With, with that said, can you give me an idea of what's to expect within the cookbook? Like, is there a theme? So there isn't a specific theme. I'm not cooking from a particular region. Again, it's a book for everyone. So it has a variety of recipes. I have Moroccan spiked the rack of lamb in my meat chapter all the way towards a uh, Asian enoki salad in my vegetarian chapter. I also have some Italian inspiration. I've got some Greek inspiration. So there's a little bit of something for everyone, really. Amazing. Yeah. So last but not least, mm -hmm. can you just tell us where do they order your amazing book? So my 30 minute low carb dinner cookbook is available worldwide and everywhere books are sold. The most common online retailers would be Amazon.com, Amazon.ca. It's also on IndieBound. It's on Barnes and Noble, Indigo, as well as um, Books a Million. And you can even leave reviews on Goodreads. And it's 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 literally available everywhere. Books are sold. So you'll have Congrats. no. Yeah. Book. Congratulations okay. once again. Thank Sorry. You. I was like, I can't wait for you to have it. <laughs> Yeah, I'm so excited. I love food. So this will be like a staple in my kitchen. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for joining us again. As always, always like, comment, and share. Thank you. Thank you for having me.